If you win the hand, you keep me quiet. <laughs> There are some collisions in poker that just can't be avoided. Aces versus kings versus queens. Strong hand goes up against slightly stronger hand and the cards play themselves. All the chips end up in the middle of the table and someone is left dazed and despondent. It's a sick situation, but which is the sickest? Let's open the freezer to reveal the five nominees. We start at the final table of the 2009 PCA. Alex Gomez is loving life. He's been dealt aces. He's got action. What could possibly go wrong? So Ben, you're going to go heads up to this 850,000 out there. Once again, Gomez with aces. Oh yes. my and goodness. Quads bad. on the flop. Don't ever run bad. Strange. The last time Gomez had aces was against Kevin Saul and three sixes came on board. He won a big pot. This time, three of a kind is going to come on board. Alex. And he's destined to lose a lot of chips right here. Now the question is, how is Spindler going to play it? Cut that for me. I want to make sure. 1.3. He well, is wasting no time. You know, this is an interesting play here from Spindler. He's got four of a kind, and, you know, popular wisdom would say you should just call and slow play it. But what he's hoping for here is that his raise looks like a bluff. Hey, cool. He's just going to call. Now, you know, the Alex funny thing calls. about this is Gomez actually thinks he's trapping him. Right. He's, he thinks he's slow playing it. Gomez he is checks. checking. And that's poker on a higher level, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, Gomez is really checking in the hopes that Spindler, you know, is going to bluff at it. As we know, he's not bluffing. He's got four of a kind. And Spindler is really taking aggressive approach to this then hand to try to get as million. many chips in as possible. A big bet, once again, of two million. Pot up to five and a half million now. Well, this is the opportunity now for either Gomez to be an absolute genius and make the most remarkable laydown we may have ever seen. Don't bet on that. <laughs> or he might just decide, all right, now's the time. Let's get all those chips in the middle. I'm all in. Oh, and he does. He's moving it all in. Of course, Spindler. Well, he's calling. He's got four of a kind. Gomez oh, is yeah. ah, completely dead. River card is totally irrelevant. Spindler wins a monster pot, eliminating Gomez. He's up over 16 million in chips now. Stunned. Look at the crowd. They can't believe it. It doesn't take a big pocket pair to deliver a cooler. Sometimes it happens when you play so-called bad aces. Just ask Elkie. The blinds have gone up, 15 and 30,000. On this hand, Elkie will post the small blind. It'll be Magnus Peterson in the big blinds. Elkie acts first. With his ace, he was likely to raise, but he called, which is unlike him. I've seen this before. Two decent hands, and they're kind of slow playing. Well, Elkie pairs his deuce. The threes are still good for Magnus Peterson. Is he going to bet them? No, he checks. And Elkie checks behind him. Oh, my goodness. Elkie just got there again. It's a little bet. Elke can't believe that Peterson has anything. So it's really a come hither bet. Peterson's like, look, I don't believe that two helped you. And that's why he's calling. Well, the river card brings another three. Oh, it's all turned around again. Oh my goodness. It's a full house for Magnus Peterson. Three's full of deuces. And Elke has trip deuces with the ace kicker. This could be a very big hand, James. You could see all the money go in here. Elkie's asking himself, what is that bet about? I've got the best hand. There's no straight possible. There's no flush possible. I've got trip deuces with the nut kicker. There is the raise. 140,000 more. 200,000 total. Look at Magnus. Absolutely 
cold. He's trying to ask himself, can Elkie possibly have tens full or sevens full? He would have raised pre-flop with tens or sevens. He said, I've got the best hand. All in. Wow, he's done it. He's pushed all in. I call and Elki makes a very quick call. He doesn't even think about what his opponent might yes. have. Yes. Yes. He thought his trip twos were good, and look, he is devastated. Oh, look at Elki. He's just destroyed now. Shouldn't play bad aces. I don't think this man needs a lesson in poker right now, Magnus. No, that was extremely poor etiquette. That cooler cost Elkie an EPT title. Similar story for Julian Martini at the PSPC in 2019. Heads up, he flopped a flush, just two cards away from $5.1 million and poker glory. With the action check to him, Martini will continue for a million. Kalilas calls. The turn card is the Queen of Diamonds. Kalilas improves to trips. Very bad news when you improve the trips and you are still behind. This deck is frostier than a Canadian windshield. Second barrel coming from Martini. That's 4.6 million. Martini's actually bet so big that Ramon can't even really raise. They will be playing for stacks on the river more than likely. Lilas calls to the river, which is the five of diamonds. That's a boat for Kalilas. He was 3% on the flop before catching running cards to make a full house. This deck is unthinkably cold. This is too ridiculous. Just when I think I've seen it all in poker, poker finds a way to get even more ridiculous. It's been checked to Martini. He shoves. Kalilas calls all in and he will double up. Martini can't believe it. What an insane run out. Luck does seem to favor the Spanish in these situations. I'm basing this theory on a sample size of two hands. That one and the three-way all in from Monte Carlo. A cooler involving three monster hands, Juan Martin Pastor's aces being the favorite. I think I have to go. Yeah. Mateos calls! Good aces. Oh. I swear, I swear I fall jacks. I swear. Cool story, bro. Aces versus kings versus queens. Well, none of the three ones, eh? Six swept for everyone so deep in the tournament. Even aces aren't totally safe. Juan Martin Pastor set to triple up. Christopher Frank likely to be eliminated. The flop. 10-4 deuce. The turn card. It's a queen! Oh. I am so, so sorry. Buenos dias, Adrian. And now there's a 90% chance we lose two players. Mateos goes from worst to first, and it's a double KO! Frank out! Pastor out! <sighs> that really sucks. Juan, you have my sympathies.
But did anyone feel sorry for Tony G following this ugly setup versus Vanessa Russo on the big game? You ready? <laughs> Tony G is capable of this song and dance, whether he's strong or bluffing. Vanessa is going to have a hard time getting away from this one. You ready? If you win the hand, you keep me quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe you. That bluff I'll call. That bluff I'll call. Tony just added unspeakable equity to this pot. Vanessa calls. Tony's bombed the flop, which may make Vanessa think he's on a draw. An ace on the turn. Russo has top set. Hello, nasty. As Tony G would say, ace from space, and Vanessa has gone from zero to hero. Tony G does have a flush draw. 10,000. And bets 10,000. You could shut me right up. How? Well, by taking, being, being all in and winning the pot. Punch in the face. Can I just push a button? <laughs> that ace dramatically improves Vanessa's hand, but if she put Tony on spades, he just got there. She just calls. On spade watch. I check. Tony checks in the dark. The river. A sick card. The five of hearts. <laughs> now you got to show some, some guts. <laughs> Can you bet this or you're going to make a really weak check now on, on the end? Go on, Vanessa. You can do it. For Vanessa, best card ever. Full house over full house. All in. Cool. Ace is full. Wow, very nice. That's the best. Very nice. You got screwed? I got a full house too on the end. Wow. And a flush draw. That's it. That shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Vanessa. Those are the nominees. Now it's time for you to decide which was the sickest cooler. Have your say by casting your vote at the PokerStars blog.